Hey guys. <clears throat> oh my god. Hey guys. Welcome back to Rusty Beauty Shop. And uh, we are back on the TR6. I just finished grinding here. Not too deep because we want it to be solid. So, and I trimmed this so we can extend now the wheel well. And the wheel well, I think I'm gonna extend it in two pieces. One is gonna come down to here to this level, and then we're gonna make another patch for here to cover the whole thing. I filled up some holes here. These were um, from where it was braced and I literally ripped it when I was pulling out the patches. So I welded them in and this is the other side. It's not perfect but it is uh, solid at least. Of course we're gonna have to work on this flange on top so I didn't bother too much with the top of the triangular pressing there. Yeah, but first we're gonna finish the wheel well. So I painted the flange that is going to be hidden and it's not going to be accessible after it's welded in place. So we're going to have to wait for this to dry. I also painted this area here which is going to be overlapped and uh, inside of the B post just because I started painting so I decided to paint this inside too. Now because I have to paint it anyways. While the patch and the flange dry I can't start working on the bottom patch yet because I need the other one obviously. So we're gonna tackle this area here. There's a little bit of pitted area here. And I don't know what is this hole about. I don't remember this hole being there on the 73. Because this is for the seat belt, right? But what is this for? I have no idea. And I think I'm gonna plug it. I'm gonna close that hole if I need it later. I'm gonna drill it again, but I seriously don't remember having a hole there. And there's one on the other side as well, so I don't know. But yeah, I'm gonna tackle this area, this area, and we're gonna check what's the situation here because I can see some rust and maybe there's some uh, attention required there too. One of my favorite tools. Sandblasting, huh? Who needs sandblasting if you have this perfect tool, needle scale? So here we have an issue, and unfortunately, we're gonna have to pull out the bump stock. Can we do it a few from inside? Yeah, actually, this we can deal with from the inside. We're not gonna remove the bump stock. The big hole right next to the bump stop is right behind this. So this support will have to come off unfortunately. Okay, we opened some holes there. 
but it looks nice now. There's no more rust. We're back to solid metal. So now we can start building it up again. So I don't need to take this out because I'm gonna rebuild this from inside. Uh, I already already made a flange for here, which of course I'm gonna have to cut here and just use the almost only the vertical part. And here there are three pieces actually. This is the body mount, and it has to be extended. I don't know how far, but it was rotten too, so I, cu I cut it off, but I'm not going to rebuild it now. I'm going to rebuild it when I flip the body. It's going to be easier to work on it at that point. Now I'm just going to repair the floor drop, or what is this called? Shelf. The shelf has to come up this way with drop down, and then we're going to rebuild this wall. And we're going to leave this area for now. We're going to... Uh, work on the body mount like I said after we flip the body. Oh and by the way when I bought these gloves they told me they were touch screen friendly and I told yeah BS but actually they are look you can do whatever you want they are touch screen friendly you see perfect all right so the shelf is extended now and the drop is done and now we have to work on the outside. And I also passed this little hole here, I don't know if you see from there, but anyways. So now it only needs the flat part here and the flat part here. And uh, after that, after I mm, weld those flat parts, I'm gonna have to push this whole thing in, because you see, it's, uh, it's split from, uh, from the floor drop. So this whole box, the bump stop or whatever that is, gonna have to move in okay so now we have these two complicated patches for here and here so we're just gonna paint the back of both of them we're gonna paint here and we're gonna uh, let them dry and we're gonna start working on this again Right, so this is welded. There was a pinhole here that I welded, and I welded these as well. And now it is time to try and push this in, and just by clamping it, almost not, almost nothing happens. So I'm gonna try to hammer it in, and I'm gonna hammer here too, so we will see if it is gonna go in. You see, I can't even weld here because this needs to go in. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a big deal, so I wanted to show you, but it looks like it's not such a big deal. All right, all the patches are welded, and I even welded it over there where it was brazed before, and the brazing was uh, cracked, and that's why the bump stop moved out. After I pushed it in, I welded it from the outside, and I also welded it here on the inside to the shelf because of the brazing though it was really hard to weld it anyways it's done it's not ground but uh, it's the end of the day so i wanted to just to show you before i move to the other project and this is the outside so tomorrow we're gonna grind everything inside outside and then we're gonna install this support that we took off and we're gonna be done with it here this is welded and of course that needs grinding too and we still need to do this patch at the bottom and then we're gonna install this plate here for the belt, for the seat belt with the nut and we're gonna wait for the back of the b post to come and this wheel well is almost done I'm saying almost because there's one more issue over there in this corner over there 
that needs to be taken care of. And here as well I see many problems, but these are easy to be taken care of. So yeah, we're gonna keep going around the car. All right, welded ground. I think I'm gonna do some body work here. I think it is a good idea to, to have a nicely smooth wheel well, even though if we leave it like that, it's not that bad, but we'll see at the end, maybe we're gonna do some body work to make it look perfectly nice and inside doesn't look bad so now we can install back the support just have to straighten it actually we're gonna paint here first before i install it and while we're waiting to dry we're gonna do this patch here I know guys, this looks like an easy patch, but believe me, it's not that easy. this as a template to cut here and oh here do you see that this needs to be bent up but first I need to drill holes here so I can I'll do it when the when I flip the body I'll do this now I'll just make sure that the floor is all the way up when I weld it here Got the holes here. Okay, I'm gonna drill them later. Or we can do them now. We'll let that dry. I'm gonna go back to the support. a little different, huh? <laughs> now the most important thing is the one that KJ did. Uh -huh. Comes like this. You just have to make sure that the hole aligns. Now I said I was going to use this, but maybe I don't need to, I don't know. Because here I can weld it to the wheel wheel, I can weld it to the B-post at the end, I can weld the nut to the seal. Yeah, I think I don't need this. That would be overkill. Perfect. Wow, they did a good job. So now we just have to paint the back. Good job, KJ. What? 
and we're gonna do this even though here I don't even know where to start I really don't know where to start because I, I can't figure out where they did the seam I can see maybe some yeah here I can feel it uh, I can see that they put a very thick piece of metal here like really thick which is good it looks great but the thing is they covered a lot of rust inside and I'm gonna show you inside a little bit later so I definitely want to take this piece out because it's really bad and then here underneath I don't know what they've done it looks like there's a angle piece of metal or maybe this is going up out and up again and then this is overlapping it not really sure what's going on and it looks like there's another piece on the inside let's let's go inside and see now and this is what I'm talking about inside you see all the rust here all the rust over there and and I can't understand what piece comes from where and not that it is important but look, if you look here inside this hole, there looks like there are two thick layers of metal. I don't know, I really don't know what's going on here. here. This is where the original metal finishes and all the rust is there. And from here up looks like they built something new. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think we can just start cutting and we will see where we're gonna end up. Anyways, first of all I want to find out where they see their seams are. So I'm gonna get rid of the bondo and I'm gonna try to polish here and see where the brass is because I'm pretty sure they brass they brazed it, right? Yeah, when I look through here, looks like it goes down a little and then it goes up again. And it also proves it because they had a lot of bondo here trying to make it go a little bit higher, which is the normal shape here. This is this is not a square square here. This is this should be a little bit higher. So I was thinking before I cut this to weld some kind of support here or something to keep it at the same height but actually it is not needed because this is not the proper height we're gonna adjust the height when we cut everything we're gonna put the fender on and then we're gonna adjust this height then we might weld the support here to keep it where we want it and then we will start building the corner but you see how this metal goes down here it, it usually goes down and then it comes up a little they, they managed to fill it up with body filler here and made the shape look exactly like the original but we should try and make that with metal not with body filler right so I'm just gonna cut this out So there are actually three layers of metal here. What they do. Right, so originally the wall is like that. So that's the wall coming from the underneath and goes out and goes up. And these are the openings for the fender. 
So from here, there must be this piece overlapping it and coming this way. So that's our cut here. And of course, the outer piece has the hose for the fender mount. So that's original, but what they did now is they cut it here, so they have the wall. Then they did another piece on the outside, braced it here, and this piece goes out and like that. Then on the inside they did another piece that goes like that, like that, and like that. And then the, out, the outer piece comes like that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's what they did. So they just sandwiched the old wall between, between two layers that are pretty, pretty much the same profile, like a thunderbolt profile. And then they did this. Do you understand? I think you do. Okay, so now that I know what they've done, I'm, it's gonna be easier for me to, to take it apart. <laughs> But I have to take out this patch first because this is overlapping everything. Oh my god. So this is the situation, this is the original metal and it ends here. So from here up they wrapped it into another piece of metal on the outside and another piece of metal on the inside. So they basically sandwiched it between these two pieces. This one on the inside and another one on the outside, the one that we just removed. And then from here up they did the sail panel or whatever that is. Oh my god. Look at that. Nice and solid on the outside and exactly like some people. Nice and uh, shiny on the outside and full of whatever inside. Alright, so this is all I wanted to see. I wanted to see how bad the whole thing is. So I pulled out this and this is part of the original method here. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm not gonna pull out the internal one because I'm gonna cut below it anyway, so it's gonna come off. So I just wanted to see how far the, the rust goes. And what we're gonna do now, I think we're gonna wrap up this video here and we're gonna, in the next one, we're gonna start just cutting down to where the rust is here. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut the the flange of the wheel well, but that's fine. We're gonna cut just the flange. We're not gonna go further here. We're gonna cut right at the corner so we can replace the piece of metal on top and then we're gonna weld the flange back. Here, I can't really imagine how it is, what it, is, it needs to look like, but we're gonna figure it out. I know that this plane and this plane are one, but the rest here underneath, I don't know. And uh, I'm gonna take the needle scaler now, I'm gonna find out how far the rusted area is here to see how, how much of this we have to replace and how we're gonna make this shape, but we're gonna figure it out. And uh, I'm not gonna cut the top yet, I'm gonna use it as a guide <laughs> to how far to go with this piece and after when this piece is finished, replaced, then I'm gonna cut the top and replace that too. It looks like it is straight line. It's pretty straight line. Of course, we have to line it up with the fender. 
that it's uh, in both directions it's straight line. So it's good to have this as a reference. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. And the rest of this repair we're gonna see in the next video. I'm happy that the wheel well is done. Well, not completely because there's a little bit of work at the back too, but that's gonna happen in, uh, when I when I move from here to the left. For now, I want to focus on this area. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching.